Hello everyone and welcome back to Aldershoven here and as you can see we're back down to literally no money so what I'm going to do is just show some clips roughly showing what we'll be doing off camera and that and then after that we'll go ahead and explain everything that's going on with all the issues with the olive groves and that and what we've been doing to remedy that and a few other things so yeah we'll head to sh to the land handle cell point and then we'll have a little chat about this i think <laughs> Now we've also leased out the tree harvester because before, oh, bit screwy there. We were having some issues with cutting some trees. However, as soon as we bought a logging field, an actual logging forestry logging area, it seems to work fine. So I guess it's just certain trees in certain areas it can't do. Fair enough. But yeah, the elephant in the room is the olives. What I've gone and done is basically. I ploughed the field, I initially replanted everything, and then I was still getting the same issues, but then perhaps we could tell in the section where I did some olive harvesting on the edges. So if we go to flight mail, flight moves, I'll try to explain. So this is no sort in our field here. Basically all this was being ploughed out in that. And I have some vines here, which is outside of the initial field area. And the ones that were outside the field area, that was marked down on the map initially, stayed fine. It didn't disappear, it didn't have any weird issues where all of a sudden the ground was going to a seeded state of grown canola. And <coughs> what you may have seen if you're on Mississippi CDP Cisco service, we post some screenshots about it. But if not, I'll post some screenshots up here now if I remember in editing. Of where the olives were there. Some of them were disappearing, but they're still having some weird collision issues. So I'm not sure what's going on. So I've gone and took the decision of got rid of the olive growth. We sold this field. It's no longer our field. I recuperated about 130 ish grand for the olives. Because the plan is, I want to do this multiple years, not just one year, and that's it, done. So I've recuperated that. I've sold the field, which is about 140 grand. And I haven't done it yet, but what I'm going to do is sort of simulate how much olives we would have gotten. And based on that one video clip of us seeing, doing just one strip here with two olive officers, we got, what was it? Let's look at my notes here. 6,313 litres. We had 18 strips going across. So do the math. That works out to 130,634 litres of olives. I will be simming that back in because I think it's unfair we lose it. But when I said that uh, all we just gone took the exact money back. I think I gave myself like a 40, 50 grand penalty because we are going to get these odds back. But anyway, so let's go and recuperate some of our money. And sell some delicious goods, get about 100 grand. Because it's still the summer frenzy. Summer frenzy ends today and we've gambled all our money. 
and by the end of this episode we'll be at least over half a million easily in the bank. And already we have made over well, nearly 91 grand, so that ain't too bad. Oh yeah, just shy of 91 grand. Also, we did a fertilizing contract. I'm going to get reimbursed for some fertilizer that's still in there, so thank you very much. We started the episode with literally no money whatsoever. Now we're back up to 100 G's nearly. So now, let's go over to you, because also, because obviously we've managed to do some login, we've got a login trader. Of course, these trees are from here. As you can probably tell, we've chopped some of these trees down here. Because I have got a bit of a big plan here. I want to upgrade this from a 50 for a cow pasture that holds 50 cows to one that holds 200 cows. Down to that, it roughly covers this entire area here. So the manure pile has to be moved. Chance are like some of this field here has to be moved a bit. Even if we lose this little strip here, that is fine by me. But also, we're going to have to get some dirt in, some gravel and rocks. Because I want to fill this part of the pond here, like roughly about here. At the very most, to the point where we got our lighting. So this bit here is going to be filled. And that should be enough space for the cow pasture we want. So, which one is it? This one here. You could potentially go with this one, but the heck, we can actually save money. Let's get a free range one. Oh, we may actually do that instead, because we still keep the fifty cows. If we put that there, it's gonna be like a hundred in. 95 cows. Try to get. I'm still thinking, yeah, it's just going over until like this bit here, so. So, how much is that? That is 203 grand. But the one I wanted was the same one as this, just bigger. I'll see if we did like side by side, you'd be like that. I try to think of where to put potentially. I know, thinking something like here. If we put it here, it covers this area here. We get this little area back here, but yeah, I don't know. I may just. How much is this little one here? I think that's 50 cows and. But yeah, I think in something, was it this one here we said we want to go for? Yeah, it's a bit more rundown, of course. It's not as modern as perhaps some of our other stuff, but it does the job. I'm trying to think, where does it start the free range area? So, sorry, it's about there on the edge, so around to put literally like here on the edge of the pavement that can actually work all seriousness that could work try to think where our trigger points are so that's going to be like our slurry perhaps there and I guess that's going to be our milk there on the side our food goes in obviously through the doorway I think it ain't gonna look as pretty, I will admit to that. But yeah, it's just something different, so. But I think so many plans here, and. Yeah, like, the map I'm gonna be making here today is gonna be astronomical. Because we've got 40,000 litres of furniture to sell. Also. How much storage have we got? 482,000. 
so, well over 600,000 litres of silage, so that's just going to be like five or six trips with the Lizard Underbelly trailer, which we'll be using. Oh, that is very tippy toppy. Yeah, we could save some of that silage to make TMR for the cows. Potentially, but. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Guess that wall wasn't shut down properly. Fair enough. <laughs> See if we can drag that up with us. But yeah, we've got to be careful with steering on this. But yeah, this truck here, this lorry, I'm going to call it a lorry, lorry though. It's more of a American style-ish, but well, pretty much almost like a transit van front end on steroids almost. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to slowly take this up here to the sawmill. And then I think... Then you yeah, we'll see how much slumber we can get in here. And then after that, we can look at our brand new forestry area. That's very expensive as well. But yeah, get us up here, and then I'll see you folks in a second. And here we are at Sawmill, so we're going past our current side trader. And we're going to see how much lumber we can get from these trees here. Oh, without crashing. Dang it, who put that damn lamp, lamp post there? It's clearly in the way. But yeah, depending on how much money we could be, be potentially making from the furniture, we could really look at getting a brand new sawmill. But as you can see, there is our rotten tree harvester. So we're at 167,000 litres of lumber, up to 186, 196, can't get rid of that one damn hog. There we go, 198, so just over 30,000 litres of lumber. And let's go tidy you up here a little bit. I'm not going to move these because I just want. Obviously, we've got a pallet limit, unfortunately, even though I really hate this stupid limit. Set by joints, but that's going to be for another rant in a different video. But anywho, we've got four furniture pallets here at the moment. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 18, 24,000 litres of pellets. So, and that's just going to ramp up really quickly, I think. So, go down here. Yeah, i got a bit of wood chips left over. Uh, just looking, how much planks wise? We've got about another month's worth, well, half a month's worth as it is. Obviously, we're still making planks from this sawmill here, but it's just not keeping up. It's only making 9,000 litres a month, so. So, literally, we've got about a month left off planks, potentially. We'll get the odd trickle here and there, I know, but. I think, number wise, from wood. That is what, 48,000 litres a month. So 48, 80, 96. We just got enough for about four months. So at September, October, November, December. So this time December, we've still got enough furniture, or well, enough timber to make furniture. So that ain't too bad. But yeah, the tree harvester will leave here for now. And the reason why I also keep in times at 0.5 is because I want the harvesting done today. But that'll be in the next episode. But yeah, so 
we spent over 700 grand on our new forestry area and we've only taken a very very small chunk out of it literally just there's a couple of trees here we've taken out so that's about say a little bit let's say here we've touched and we've got this entire area so and this costs us 731 grand to buy safe to say we'll get our money back from this more than we'll definitely make our money back from this I'm not worried about that what I am worried about is just time now like these trees here or these ones I won't say I know this one's gonna be may not be able to harvest this one can we chop this one down well, we can a birch but yeah this is a one of those like ochre trees that really not suitable for a harvester but I think we've only made a small den and the forest just goes on and on like over here obviously it's not all flat it does dip quite a bit here I think potentially we could look at putting the new sawmill up here but there's just not enough flat land Let's try and have a look here, so... If we get the sawmill we want... I think it's this one here, yep. Oh, we could potentially make it work. But it's just a lot of terrain editing. I see really potentially if we can I don't know curve this mountainside. Can we like somewhere up here? Well, that'll be a very good option for us potentially. But again, it's just room comes out of luxury here. Just thinking. Yeah, that just would not set right. So we may have to move the sawmill somewhere further south, so... That's going to be a bummer for transporting, rather than to have a quick transport. Boom, boom, boom. But you know what? It is what it is at the end of the day, so... But now, for the main money maker. We'll sell some furniture, so... Fourteen thousand liters of planks, not planks, furniture. So, Oops. be interesting to see how much money we can generate from this. Answering that, forestry era costs us what seven hundred grand. So, but also that did mean I'll quit. She folks of taking that small loan extension of 435 grand now it was at 400 and I think 400 or 405 I can't recall but regardless so yeah again that loan we need to pay off sooner the better but if we can make a lot of money at the moment I'm not worried about paying the loan off straight away I'm going to put that money towards to making more money. But of course, yeah, we will get back to farming now. Just all this is just... Well, I'll say it's side income. At the moment, it's our only income source. Until we start doing the harvesting, which will be soon. Will be just in the next episode. But yeah, just down here. Potentially, we could have to saw me over here, perhaps, if there's enough space, but... Ah, uh, no, I don't think there is. Let's 
get the sides open. So we're at 98 grand. How much moolah are we going to make? This is going to take some time, so what I'm going to do is just quickly speed this up, I think. Oh boy! <laughs> That is a lot of money. 330 ish grand, or whatever it was. That is some change. That is some change for sure. And how much are we going to get per month? I was even going to have a little look here. We're going to get, if we get everything up and running, that is 70, 84, plus 60, plus 70,000 litres. You're potentially making this trip twice a month. However, I will say, I heard some inside rumours of the prices of everything's going to come down soon, so... Apparently there's, I don't know, some idiot somewhere has been causing trouble, and... Obviously the global market's looking at it, and as a result, people are a bit on the edge a bit, so... Don't be surprised if after this month, we start to suddenly see a recession of sorts. Hopefully it doesn't impact us too much where we have to sell stuff, but hey, if other people have to sell stuff, like some cheap equipment perhaps, then by all means. Because I am reconsidering whether or not to sell out the case in John Deere and just get upgraded more modern version. Obviously with the case it is modern as it is, but more the John Deere, but so like John Deere 4955, get rid of that, get a 7RM or John Deere 7R series, whatever it's called. But yeah, I am really excited about the hat. Obviously we will try at the end of the month sell another load. But yeah, so I see this money here now, that will cover, I'm going the wrong way, I think. Yep. But yeah, this 431 grand. If we just go to deal with that now, that can either pay off the loan, as it is now, be done with it, or get a new plot of land, at field 19, and get that sawmill in. Oh. Spoil for this year, we're spoiled for choices at the moment. And this is even when we haven't touched the damn silage yet. Well, I haven't even sniffed at the silage yet, so. I think, yeah, we'll place this up here. And then. Yeah. Just go and do some silage or manure or whatever. We do have manure and sorry to sell as well. So many things to do here. So, there we go. We've got some helpers taking the manure and slurry over. We got about 40 or so thousand litres of manure and about 34,000 litres of slurry. However, we need to deal with the silage now. I'm thinking let's lease another truck and I'm thinking of leasing this Scania S530 Ooh, we can have 8x4, 8x2, 6x4 I'm thinking an 8x4 would be nice Let's look at some of these tire options. Yeah, let's go with off-road. 
Do we want the bumper? Nah, I don't think so. Nah, let's not have the airfoil. No, nope, we won't have anything like that. Yes, yeah, I have some protection, and there are so many options with this. Uh, let's mix up a little bit. Um, I'm thinking. Oh, a nice lime green. That looks nice. That. So I'm thinking we could go with a nice white on that. Oh, that looks nice. And that's one. Some extras and that. So I'll go ahead and lease that. Ouch, that was very expensive. 11 grand nearly. And can we get the trader we want from here? No, we're gonna have to look up ourselves. No worries. But yeah, I think time's now to go ahead and release the Humongo underbelly trader. We want a single tank, please. Do we want tires or do we want twins? I think white tires, beacons. And the main colour, I think, try and match that sort of limeish green. It's a bit too bright, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, let's go with that. So, tell us about 16 ish grand it's going to cost us. But man, it's going to be very. We're going to see a lot of green today, obviously, with the John Deere Harvester and that. What? I love that. That sort of house mounts up. That sort of thunder clamp. That is very nice. Not too bad of a horn. So we'll see how this copes are off road in that, because I know it's like almost well it's like over twice the price of the next, but Ozzy's it's got a bit more horsepower now. Like speed wise, I'm not too worried about speed and that. Let's we'll see how it copes. Let's try and push it a little bit. Let's go through this narrow little bridge here. Undo the covers. Oh, wrong way. Actually, wait a minute. Let's get. Oh, we can, can lower and lift that. Oh, that's helped us a lot. Especially how the rear tray also it swivels as well with us, so... No, don't grass. You want silage. So, we'll get this load up. How is the manure? Sorry, doing okay. Where's the manure to? Where are you going? Well, that must have taken the long way around. Anywho, so yeah, 44,000 years of manure. Yes, we could go ahead and try to get the biogas plant. However, that doesn't cost us like one half million. Including the land, it's about 1.61 mil, so 
I think for now, I'm just going to settle with just saying it here at the Surrey Yard. Next to this picturesque area here, and see how much money we can make. Not too bad, 50 grand. Not too bad at all. Now, whilst the sorry tanker is finding its way over, we need to take this over to our usual bell cell point and sell all of this silage. Obviously, traction and performance has been affected here. Well, it's more performance than anything else, so you're not rocketing up to 50 more miles an hour, but it seems to be coping very well. Actually, I'm half tempted to try to test this on the hill. On that infamous. Okay, two sex we're having some worker issues. No worries. So, what's that selling? Nope, don't you. We'll take you. And we got 41 grand for that, so yeah, not too bad overall. But yeah, I think the first of those, we'll just see how much we get in silage alone. Actually, you know what, let's, let's take this on the hill now. I want to take this on the hill, see how it copes and performs. I think I wouldn't spend 200 grand on this if it performs well. But yeah, like staring it out. But yeah, I think it works, especially with the glass. And I think when we go ahead and buy it, we'll go with the lighter glass option. I think. Obviously, if you're something like in Spain or something that's sunny all the time, then yeah, perhaps. But here in Germany, yeah, it's not really needed. So, but yeah, I just want to see how this copes on the hill. I think this all right train combo is very good. I will say it is very, very good. So I'm swinging over the play, like I think steering is fine. Of course, it's going to be that bit of understeer, of course, with a heavy load. Okay, let's put this to the test. Let's slow right down. Let's creep up. And now, back into cruise control. Can this cope the hill? 16 miles an hour, 15, 14, 13, 12. Ooh. Come on, can this get up here? Let's go lift that front wheel up. That may have helped. Follow it down again, has it helped us? Look at that, so we're stopped on the hill. So there, there is a little bit of axle tramping. You can see like, the front wheel is like, it was all jolts up in here a little bit. But then they quickly bring traction. Let's go and get the next and see how this can cope. So here we are with the next and let's see how this can cope. I think with the Scania it's because obviously it sort of jolts into the first couple of gears so. this, on the other hand, the range, even with 600 horsepower, it is struggling. 
Well, I think we found our win in terms of what truck we want, to, which locker should I say, go for. I think we're just spinning our wheels now. Yep, spinning our wheels. Yeah, that's, that seems good for off road in that, but for just, like sheer horsepower. Obviously, we can go with a sort of more of a bigger horsepower lorries than that, but. I'll just get sucked up. And. So, yeah, once it gets up to gear, so get, once it gets up to like, second gear and that. Very good. So, you know what? The Scania Streamline is the winner for me. Probably it says the lizard on the front, let's ignore that bit. But yeah, so we've gone and killed enough time as it is. As we get, this is a clear winner for us. So in terms of like, other lorries and that we can go with... Get a slot first of all. Perhaps something like the... COE, AWs perhaps, but... And the TLX H look too American. You know, something like this. Very good for the map. So yeah, that's now... I think we're going to kill enough time. Let's go make some money. And what I'm going to do now is a time lapse of us selling all of the signage, I think. So you're at half a mil now. Let's see if we can break into that 1 million mark after spending all of our money at the start of the episode or even before the episode. <laughs> And I strongly think we're going to actually hit that 1 million mark. And that's just quite surprising. Like, start of the episode, we even had like 400 quid to our name. And now we are a millionaire for the first time. And uh, was it 1.017 mil? <coughs> Obviously, yeah, good income in that. But of course, as I said before, this income won't last long. This year till the end of the year. Oof. So I had a fender bender with air collisions and But yeah, I am so loving this Scania streamliner. I've gone and returned the next. We did have to pay an additional 
like 1900 quid leasing fee for another hour of usage. But yeah, this definitely seems to be the one for us. Last thing, this could be the big test off that hill. That's the big test for me. Obviously, if I was all trying the next short coat, but having like this combo here is going to be our like main fleet transport trailer of a like, big green in that. So you can't do everything as well, like how the rear wheels steer. That is something I would love to see. So you can keep with tight turns, so like here, try to do a tight turn. Obviously you need some space, but just look at that turning radius, that is just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna park this up over here. parking tool exactly. Somewhere here. Actually no, we need to take you up to the sawmill because I want to try to do another load of timber. And that's where I think we'll end it for today's episode. It's just going to be a bit of a short one. Mainly just because of time now with the whole olive situation. I spent best part like half a day, like hours, several hours, scratching my head, figuring out, replanting everything, deleting everything. Because deleting 3.5 whatever hectares of. Oof. That was a clear stop sign there, uh, but I'm to go this way anyway. But yeah, these AI traffic. Ugh. See, I'm in the big glory here. I can just demolish you if I want to. Just cut you up there a little bit. See? How do you feel about that? But yeah, this just pulls in that. Perhaps we could look out and see if there's any other lorries around 800 ish horsepower that looks nice, but I am 99% sure this is going to be our future lorry. Definitely expanding the fleet now. Yesterday's episode was just like the was it the tanker and pallet trader, and now just yeah, absolutely phenomenal. So here we go, and uh, where should we park it to? There we go, we'll park it up here. Now, see, so the like about using the tree harvester is all perfectly straight logs, there's no awkward branches or anything. Oop. So, yeah, where is the. There you go, now, that's what I wanted, was the yule. But yeah, I think we'll leave that as it is for now, until tomorrow. And then we sell another load of furniture. I think just the idea of selling another 40,000 litres worth of furniture is just absolutely mind-boggling. I think, again, having a day, it depends on the price as well, because we're going to be hit hard with the prices tomorrow, apparently, so... We'll see how that copes and that, but... Let's go and push some socks together. Hang on, one log there is across and the others are... I think these log them are about 7 or 8-ish meters. Oof. There we go, take it steady. you in. Uh, we'll grab this one log here on the side. But yeah, in terms of the plans, what we're going to do, I think, yeah, we'll go with that 
195 cow pasture at some point and then yeah get the sawmill in I think we'll try to get the sawmill in tomorrow in the next month in September because I think we will run out of planks tonight Oof, just absolutely crazy this is That's what one is. Nice and flat. I've seen this whole shaking off the cab. It's making me a little bit queasy, so let's try to keep it all together now. Let's grab a few of those like that. You know, something like that. a bit dangly. Steady. Comet. Yeah, we'll play some you down. The rest we will go and just pick these up. I think that's too many logs we tried to lift up at once. It's got a bit greedy there. Obviously I'll like to sort this out properly like with thicker trees and that here and there, but at the moment I'm just sort of placing them in wherever about to be honest, so strap some of these down. So yeah, what I'm going to do here quickly is just get us all loaded up and then I'll bring the folks back when we got another full load of trees. And there we go. Got another full load, sort of. A lot of space wasted, but it's just down to length of logs. I could cut them down a bit short, like 5 meters perhaps, and then get I'm not sure that that top one there is trapped up, so I'm going to be very careful. And do I risk going down here? And I want this risk it. Try to keep it in low gear. And this should just cruise it down. Last thing I want to do is to tip this. There we go. But something like with vlogging that, a lot of this I will do off camera, or at least I'll just show the like, clips of it. Oh, no. Don't go log, I need you to go into there. So yeah, 196, 231. So that is another 35,000 litres of timber. That's about almost a full four months worth of logs. Come on. I'll reverse you in then. There we go. We go now. There we go. 234. And how does that look now? Scroll down here to productions. Turn you off. Keep you going. And yeah, that bar is barely filled up, but I see planks is going down. We've got 4,000 litres of furniture, 2,000 litres of pellets. Obviously, it hasn't gone up rapidly in this episode because we've just been keeping time low. But once we do the harvesting next episode, then we will go back to normal at times three or whatever speed. So yeah, we got the John Deere here. However, I want to bell. And there is a nice little trailed mod. 
that we can use and we can get a bather in that so that's why we want the snuffle stalk both please off road tires you know what yep we'll go ahead and lease you then we want a bather because we want to be able to stroll and I'm thinking we don't need a windbreaker of course I mean, or do we now because it's going to be producing swaths so we don't need a wind rower uh, which one do we want though? I want big square bells I'm thinking let's go with the case one that uh, looks pretty nice, nice square bells. So go ahead and lease you. Now we need something for the forage harvester. And of course with this Schnuffle stalk, we can use that because it's got a fifth wheel hitch as well as a three point knee hitch and a ball barn. Man, this is going to be really handy for us to have, I know that for sure. So we need a forage harvester and because we've got money, all these shit mines splashing out a bit of cash, so I'm thinking let's go with you. Long pipe, BKT wide tires, LED lights. Oh no, we want to keep you green. I should have pretty hard to keep the colours like that, so you're going to be 26 free. First, we need to lease you. And actually, we. I may do the harvesting myself rather than get a worker, so. We won't need a second one. So, speaking, that goes on the back of the combine to the beater. And we can get one like this. What's that hitch like? I'd say. Pin hooks so home. May yeah, we need a dolly if he'd get back to a trade or something. So we'll be using the underbelly trader. But yeah, exciting stuff ahead, folks. And on that note, that's where we're gonna end it off for today's episode. So yeah. Next time we will be doing the harvesting. We'll start doing the wheat. And then we'll quickly swiftly move on to the chaff of our corn. Usually it's not ready to harvest now, but it's at a certain stage where we can harvest it for maize. So I did, so yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it with that. So get you nope, I'm not gonna try to cross that bridge. I've tried before and it is just about doable. But with a trader, I do not want to risk it. That's why this would be a good little test story for us. Like, see how this can cope around the farm. See, Heather's just big enough, it's not too big. Beater. That's all we'll just shove this at me. Scoot. Oh, no, 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 not into the drink. Oh, that was close. But yeah, so yeah. Anyways, we'll end the episode here. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, smash that button. Feel free to comment down below. If you want to share us, then please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider. But, for you to do, hope you're going to stay, but for now, just to be following my vlog stream, and I'll see you all very soon.